Okay, I, I will okay. tell you the um, full endoscopic soft tissue approach with the lumbar disc. Uh, I will report my experience in Egypt. Uh, you can see that, uh, of course, we know that this is the difference between room light and the headlight, and the microscope and the endoscope provide us more. And this is the 25 degree angle uh, endoscope that we use from the uh, Wolf Company. I'm using in my practice. Um, I'm not sure if we can apply those types of questions, but anyway, uh, which intervertebral foramen is the biggest in dimension in the same healthy person? So uh, when we go from up to down, the, uh, the if intervertebral foramen comes narrower and the reverse for the interlaminar space. So the L5S1 has the biggest dimension and the L and when we go up, L34 is bigger than L45 and so on. So this is how it looks like, and this is how we should approach, uh, think about our approaches to go from the interlaminar approach or the uh, transfrontal approach. Uh, we use this endoscope, and uh, you can see it's 25 degree, and it has a, this kind of channel, and, uh, uh, and the, these instruments I will explain later. And we use the trigger flex device. This is how the transfrontal approach looks like, and I am fascinated with this approach. It has a many useful application. This is the way we can go to the approach the, uh, <coughs> the foramen. We approach the lower quadrant of the foramen, uh, saving the root up. Uh, this is the corridor that we use. And uh, sometimes we can, this is a, uh, we can use that pure transfrontal approach um, and sometimes we can apply another postrolateral approach. If you use the postlateral approach, we should use the drill to thin, thin, make the SAP thinner so we can approach the um, lumbar spine from a different angle. But anyway, let's talk about the pure transferanal soft tissue approach. There is no drilling in this approach. This is the corridor that we are using, and this is how the nerve root looks, looks like. Okay, and this is what we have to see. The endoscope has to be in the sleeve, and the sleeve has to be visualizing the ventral part of the spinal epidural canal. The dorsal part, I'm sorry. Uh, we bend the patient. We don't use the, uh, we just use the usual curvature of the table to make the patient bend to open the interfrontal space. And first line is goes with the uh, posterior facet line, as you can see here. And then we make another line parallel to this space. And the junction point between them, we approach it with the needle. And then we put, uh, and then we put the needle and then the wire dilator, as it's explained by the company. And finally, we have the sleeve in, in place at the uh, uh, dorsal, uh, the ventral epidural space. Once we apply the sleeve, we put the endoscope. Uh, this is a 23 years old male. You can see this kind of disc, as we can see here. May, some people may do double level laminectomy and discectomy. Another may do double level fixation. We can use the endoscope, left microscopic hemilaminectomy and partial fastectomy, and we can use the transfrontal discectomy. Many options in, in, uh, in, in such patients. We choose to do the endoscopic approach. Uh, I'm, I hope the video is working. It's a pure soft tissue approach, so I don't use any 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 uh, drilling. It's useful to rotate while tracking the fragment out to make sure that. Uh, pulsations of the ventral epidural space is very important sign that decompression is full and we can check also the trigger flex and C arm that we have decompressed the, the whole this this clip. This is another the, uh, the extrafrontal approach. Uh, we can approach this safe point and then we go with the SAP up 
and find their root axilla and then uh, take the fragment out. It's easier to, uh, some other people do it different way, go inside and then take the, the endoscope outside. This is the SAP, you can see, and I will show you the, the root now. Okay, this is the, the annulus. This is nerve root, you can see here. This is the after decompression. So uh, another case, a 45 years old lady, previous two lumbar surgeries five years ago. And uh, what is the options for treatment? Should we go for microscopic discectomy or fixation with L45 discectomy, double level discectomy with fixation or we use the transformal approach? Uh, transfrontal decompression, transfrontal root is always a fresh approach and this is, this is one big advantage of that route. This video is a little bit long, so I will skip part of it. After taking the fragment out, A lot of adhesions we have, uh, and this is pulsation of the dura, as, as I told you before, which means that we have did successful decompression. Patient was worried about recurrence, so I did as much as I can, change the angle of the sleeve to take more and more risk material. Despite I am convinced that uh, this kick to me, uh, the more you remove the disc is not concerned with re recurrence. But anyway, I removed as much as I can. This is final after decompression, and you can see this is the ventral epidural space fully decompressed. So pelvis is one limiting factor for this approach, and uh, as I have seen some schools drilling the pelvic, the uh, the iliac crest to approach the lumbar spine. I don't think it's it, it's uh, minimally invasive route this way, but you can see here this is the iliac crest and. Uh, across this level, across here, the pedicle of L45. If the iliac crest crosses half of the pedicle, you cannot get the disc below. So uh, I told you that we use, we use this endoscope also in several patients with discitis. Once we get the endoscope inside and wash and do some curettage, inject some ozone, sometimes inject some antibiotics, it has a very good results. A trial before doing uh, uh, cure edge of the disc and fixation. This is how it looks like. So of course we know that the how the, the advantage of using the endoscopy and there is another route that we are uh, telling you about the uh, the interlinear approach. So I I summarized my talk today about the uh, uh, transfrontal approach only. Thank you very much. Dr. Tamer, thank you very much. A very wonderful and informative talk. Uh, really appreciate what you're doing in the transforaminal sector. And uh, this endoscopy basically has been a paradigm shift in spine surgery. Transforaminal endoscopy has its own great set of advantages. And uh, I hope you have not had any bad experiences with root dysesthesias and uh, persistent pain. Well, uh, I, I, in, my, in my practice, I, I think interlaminar approach, microscopic discectomy has a more application. 30% of the patients were, attack, uh, were tackled transforaminal, 70% of them were uh, interlaminar or microscopic. And I always tell you that if I didn't succeed to do the uh, approach from the, uh, from the transforaminal route, then we will shift to the interlaminar or we do microscopic surgery. And it's yeah. the same procedure. It's basically what you're talking of is merging of approaches. And yes. 
it is it is that that is exactly what I've been also been speaking about that we need to have a three three sixty degree mindset literally that eventually what is of importance is comfort to the patient achieving the success that we want to achieve. Transforaminal has been my own passion, and uh, I really appreciated your talk on it. Wonderful uh, planning and execution that you've shown in your videos. Really appreciative of your talk, sir.